say stop eating this stuff, I'm not going to stop. This is my job. All right. The thing about the tofu, this is what I was going to say. Uh, and this was a pivotal, pivotal moment for me, a realization, which is I, I literally had anxiety before walking in there. I was like, oh, my God, what if I eat this and I throw up? It's going to look disrespectful. I, I, then I didn't show up, Andrew Zimmern. And I looked at it this way. I said, I need to eat this food. I need to put my mouth around this sandwich, and I need to have the perspective and the mindset of a local person. Mm. I shouldn't be like someone on Fear Factor trying to get it down and just, I, I need to accept it. I need to try to enjoy it. And I, want, I need to think about what would local people enjoy about this. And that worked. And that's what I do anytime I'm eating something pretty unusual around the world. It's not always something I'm pumped to eat. But when I was in with the Datoga tribe in Tanzania and they've just ripped open this cow, they've got blood in one gourd and then gastric acid from the small intestine, essentially liquid green shit. And they're tearing, tearing off pieces of raw liver I wasn't, this wasn't in the outline. It's just happening. And they're like, uh, we, we got to roll. They're doing it. We got to roll now. So they dip I, I do the it. liver into the gastric acid? Into both. Yeah, that is they, so wild. they double dip. And let me tell you, they double dip. So they go blood, gastric acid, they toss it down. And it, it's one of the most strange experiences I'd ever had. But I loved it because I loved how the people there were so into it. Mm. And, and for them to, you know, people talk about, you, you never want to be overtly disrespectful on camera, but oftentimes people are aware within their own culture if you're, they're eating something strange. So here is you doing this. Oh, yeah, that's a different one. Oh, so, different. Okay. But, but that's right. So this similar. is also, I mean, we're watching a video here with the Maasai, also in Tanzania. In, in Tanzania, they have a very interesting way to kill the goat. What you see here is that the blood has pooled inside and I'm scooping out the blood with my hands. It's still warm and it's they coagulating too. They slurp it up. Well, and they, you got to try to get it all before it coagulates too much. And if you wait, if you hesitate, like, oh, I need to get in the right headspace, it's going to be gone. They're going to eat it all. Jeez. There's a, a lot of Native American tribes that would take raw liver and, and squirt bile on it. Mm. Yeah, they would squirt like gallbladder juice on it. And Have you had bile? No. It's the most bitter thing you'll ever taste. The, all I can compare it to is if, you know, when you are a young man, if you dry heave to the point of just throwing up stomach yeah. acid, it's that. So why would they want that on their food? Remarkably, cultures around the world develop a taste for the extremes in different directions. I mean, there's the four main tastes that people talk about, whether it's like sour, savory, sweet, um, places like stuff that's really salty or, or bitter in the case of bile. In northern Thailand, they will take the buffalo bile and drip it over their rice, their sticky rice, over raw buffalo meat. It's just been a taste that they've acquired over time. And they look forward to it. Oh, yeah. Have you ever talked to a doctor like, is, or a nutritionist? Is there some sort of a reason to do that? Like, Is, is there some nutritional benefits to putting that stuff on your food? Bitter in part, uh, sorry, uh, bile in particular. Yeah. I've not talked to a doc. I don't know that many doctors. That would be an interesting question to ask. Like, why would tribes do that? Like, maybe mm. there's some sort of a secondary, not just a taste thing, but maybe there's some sort of a benefit. Yeah, I've seen it a few different places around the world. In, in Vietnam, I experienced it too, mostly in Southeast Asia. But yeah, some folks just really love the intensely bitter flavor. Hmm. Yeah, it's an interesting question because I guess if you're looking at the lens of um, evolution, like, um, what do you call it? Through evolution, like you're looking at societies and cultures through, through like evolutionary biology, you might assume like, well, people ate things because they were the right things to eat, but sometimes they ate things because they were available. Right. And I, with that one, I couldn't tell you. But, I mean, did, do they ever eat the liver without all the other nasty stuff? Connected to it, just raw liver, because raw liver itself is difficult. Yes, agreed. Yeah, so it was nice to be distracted by the uh, the green poop juice on there. Uh, no, oh, so at that time they ate, you know. So the, to back up a little bit, this Datoga tribe was super interesting. We're way out in the middle of nowhere in Tanzania. They had these beautiful huts with a flat roof, grass growing off the top of it, and in this tribe specifically, it was a woman's job to dispatch the animal and to butcher up the animal. And so the way they kill it is, because this is a whole different topic we could get into, but the way people dispatch animals around the world, 
varies greatly. And here, they would take the cow, they would tip it on its side or on its back, and then they would um, essentially suffocate it. They would put different logs, like wood, long pieces of, of wood or branches into its throat. It would take about 10 minutes. And Jesus. It, uh, eventually, it would pass away. Then these same women cut it open. They get to butchering. They have their first initial feast. Uh, they get dibs, which you don't see in most cultures, especially in Africa. Usually stuff is going to go to the guys first. They take what they want. Then they mix the rest of the bile, blood, and organs all together and present it to the men. Whew. Why do they kill the cows that way? So I'm really uh this is something you uh, you may have seen in my videos that i i don't really shy away from how the animals are dispatched or or how they're killed and i think it reveals something about the culture and about people and i just find it fascinating because it's different mm. every place you go um with the goat that you just showed with the maasai they killed a goat and they they also they suffocated it so they put their hands on his nose and mouth and they held it there for you know three four minutes until it stopped moving and i asked the guy in the interview why are you doing this doesn't that seem cruel and he said it would be far more cruel to slash the animal's throat to to uh, to make it suffer from that and then to have it also suffer from dying afterwards so it's kind of like two points of suffering compared to one hmm i mean <laughs> It's a tough question. Would you rather have your throat slashed or have someone suffocate you to death? Well, throat slash would be quicker. It'd be quicker, but it would feel so traumatic and insane. Like, you don't oh think my. it's traumatic to get suffocated well, to death? Well, I do think that they're both pretty bad. Yeah, they're both pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah, so they just have come up with some sort of a moral reason. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's also about blood collection. So if they... Uh, they want the blood to pool within the body. Mm. So I think it, it's moral, but I, I think it's uh, practical, too, because then they can cut the body open, the blood's pooled in they there, and they can scoop it out. To they don't waste it. any of the blood because mm -hmm. they eat the blood. Now, when the women get first dibs, what do they choose? Organs. And organs. It's, it's all over the world. Organs. Really? Organs are always eaten first. And liver is one of the most valued uh, any place you go. 